Hi there, this is Mike from New TV guys and today we're in the trails, it's late in the season because this is a new brand that I'm trying, a new model it's uh, the Snarler uh, the model, exact model is uh, 86SX uh, this is a higher end single seater, uh, 570cc no, this is not a hybrid, it's only a gas powered machine uh, on this one, on this video, it's only my riding impressions how how do I like it, how it performs, and how does it stack up to other models in the same category, a five, uh, 570 uh, to 600cc category. So, without further ado, let's go! So this is a... It's a little bit of a treat for me, because I don't get to try, to try out a new brand. Totally new brand. Uh, haven't done that in years. I remember when, I'm so old, I remember when BRP started making ATVs, and I was all happy. <laughs> so this is it, this, uh, we'll talk about the engine first, the engine is a 570cc, single cylinder, advertised at 44 horsepower. Now I've been riding it around for a while, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit confused. Because the engine seems to want to go, but the uh, the CVT the CVT is a little bit uh, a little bit sloppy. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't ramp up uh, as much as I'd like it to. But the when you slam it when you slam on the power. It's, it's good, it moves. But the, this, this is not, uh, this is not in the same, uh, same ballpark performance as the Polaris uh, 570. Again, you know, is, no, I'm not nitpicking here, no. I'm not, I'm not gonna make excuses. Power is decent. It's uh, it's much more like uh, the Seaforce uh, 600 from CF Moto, which is advertised at like uh, 40 horsepower. But it's smooth though. Uh, the torque spread is nice. No, it's, uh, it's the CVT that uh, I'm not uh, not too happy about. It could be a lot better. It's. Uh, it's like uh, carrying an anchor in a vacuum machine. It's not bad if you're like touring, because today uh, it's pretty hot out and uh, conditions are not uh, pristine. The snow's heavy, so yeah, there is a bit more drag. But if I'd be doing this in uh, in a Polaris uh, 570, which is its direct competitor, and its advertiser at the same HP, roughly, uh, there'd be there'd be more power on tap with the with the Polaris, but yeah. Apart from that, this, what seems to make it lug lug around a bit. The rest of the drivability is great actually. It's nice, precise, good power steering. I love the seat. The seat is uh, a little bit on the harder side of things. So once you you sat on it for a while. It kind of molds itself to your rear end, and you're in uh, you're in comfort land. It's very comfortable. Nice, uh, nice little thing, uh, especially if you winter ride. Is these pockets here that I didn't quite like on my walk around actually serve a purpose of uh, keeping your the, the wind and the mud and the stuff off your legs. Uh, Especially the, the 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 cold, it makes a kind of a negative zone here where there's no wind. So it's very very comfortable. I don't know, like comfort comfort is nice. Steering is nice. Suspension is a little bit on the stiff side, but it's got the the stock the stock settings on it. But it's it's uh, it's there, and just knowing that you can adjust it, the preload or uh, rebound. 
uh, you can you can tune that out very very easily but for the stock setting especially when you're moving around at speed just give it a bit of beans see this is where the CVT seems to die but the rest is a, it's a pretty sweet package Now, if you got a machine that can move fast, be precise and comfortable, you know, on, on the suspension and handling, you got to be able to stop it. And this is, this is where I'm running into issues. The front brake, uh, where it's set, is much too low on the handlebar. It's a reach for me and I, I don't have small hands. So something's got to be done here to adjust the brake lever properly for somebody of smaller stature. And uh, the effort is, uh, is high. The effort needed is pretty, uh, pretty high. My brake mod modulation is going to go fast a little bit. A little bit more speed. And the brake modulation for the front brake I don't like their link brake by the way, 70% uh, to the front, 30 to the rear, and the same thing you reverse for the rear. So the, when you press the rear brake, you get 70% to the rear and about 30% to the front. It's not the exact numbers, but that's pretty much how link brakes works on ATVs. There's something weird. If I press the brake, the rear brake, and I'm touching the front brake, uh, I it's it's sending pressure to the to the top, and I can't use the, the front brake when I'm using the rear brake and that's something you don't you don't get when you uh, on a Polaris or Can-Am product I'm wondering how they did that link setup the rear brake is like really 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 too sen well, it's sensitive and I just touched the rear brake and it, the rear locks up uh, there's some improvement to be made on the linking system this lever is actually a parking brake that works with a cable uh, I don't know what they thought Segway, this has got to go. This is actually dangerous because right now they didn't adjust it when they gave me the machine and if I fully depress it, nothing happens. This is supposed to be a parking brake. This is an this is a very dangerous issue. Uh, especially if it's not adjusted. If it's adjusted, you're actually just gonna be using the uh, you're gonna be using the mechanical part of the brakes, which won't perform properly. Uh, no, this this has got to go. If you want to put a, a handbrake, put a put a smaller lever somewhere, so, somewhere that it won't induce the the rider in error. Because if I drive a handful of this, and I don't want to get into a, you know, th there's only engine braking right now. This is uh, not very well thought out. I'm surprised at the top speed. I haven't been able to reach more than 85 today. And it should be able to do more than that. But again, conditions are not uh, not optimal. There's something to be said also of the tires. The tires are Wanda radials. They look like uh, the big ones, you know, like a generic copy. Uh, it's a good tire. The only thing is the uh, the rubber compound is like plastic right now in this temperature, so you can feel it. You can get away with riding this thing in winter, not a pro not no problem. It's just that you know there there's much better rubber out there. But at least it's a radial, which makes it uh, handle decently. Uh, you see, I didn't even hit uh, didn't even hit 80 there. Another speed run. Let's see how it goes. And the engine noise ain't bad either. It sounds decent. And when you're not you're not jumping on a throttle on it, you know, like keeping the throttle pin, it's actually fairly quiet. It's not a very noisy machine. I, I've seen a lot lot noisier. I actually heard a lot noisier, <laughs> but it's fun and it's hella comfortable. I love the comfort on this thing. 
Now this is my hill where I test engine braking and right now it's on ice so let's see how it handles it <laughs> look ma no hands <laughs> Pretty nice. It, it's a. Uh, it's pretty intrusive though. It, there's a lot of engine braking, which for the average trail guy, you know, or gal, it's gonna be actually uh, a feature that uh, you enjoy. So you you don't have to slam on the brakes all the time. You just let go of the throttle and you get engine braking. So this is another very steep hill, and it's icy today. Let's see how it fares. <laughs> You see, it's not bad. It's just lacking that punch, that top end punch. I still think it's a CVT thing. You know, you, you, you can, I kind of feel it like it's, it's choked up, like it's corked. I want to uncork this thing and see what it can do. But that's a, that's a whole other video. Never know, Segway might actually lend me one and let me uh, let me have my way with it. But hey, if they don't, they don't. Uh, in this tight stuff like this, it's actually very nice. It's it's easy. It's predictable handling, even if it's uh, it's kind of smushy out there. For trail duty, yep. I like this and the, the trails are rough a little bit uh, you can feel it maybe in my voice you hear my voice going uh, uh, no this is a decent machine it's just not at the level of the uh, of the marketing hype but again I'll give uh, you know I won't be too hard on Segway another offering and it, it's it's not a rolling piece of crap so that that was the first hurdle just you know some companies uh, took a long time to uh, to understand how this stuff works and they almost got it right the first time they got a lot of things right it's just the power It's in the same power range as, uh, you know, by my uh, seat dyno, as the uh, the Arctic Cat 700, which is a bit of a slouch. But when you're riding trails like this, and a little bit rough, and all this stuff, it rides very nice. And if you don't need the power of being pinned all the time. This can actually be, truly be a very, very good, you know, daily rider. Work on the farm, because it, you know, the, fin the fit and finish is pretty decent. And this is their first ATV. They haven't had like 10 years to tune and test and all this stuff. So, you know, yeah, you got to give them props for, for doing, for, you know, for their first ATV coming out, not being a piece of crap. Still have some, some issues. I'll say it again. The engine, the engine power is is not as advertised. There's uh, there's some juice missing. And uh, if you're listening to me, Segway, if you're watching this, uh, if there's something wrong with this unit, please send me another one, so I can uh, can edit, uh, retest it, and uh, say say how it is. So I make no quarters. Uh, there's no quarters giving in my reviews. I say what I feel when I see when I look at reviews online. This is what I want to see, whether it's a computer or an ATV or a motorcycle. I want to get the facts. No, no marketing, no marketing BS. If I want to know marketing, marketing, I'll just watch the videos on the manufacturers. Sometimes they are some. Uh, some caveats and stuff you need to know and that's my job telling you how these things ride 
and uh, to be brutally honest, I was expecting a rolling piece of junk. All I can say, it's a decent, it's a very decent machine. You know, the first, uh, the first uh, Chinese ATVs I saw coming in Canada. Oh boy, that was not great. But this is like, it's like Segway took a, you know, took a learner's course and actually kind of base their stuff because there, there's a, there's some parts on this one that are the same parts on a CF but it's not a CF moto engine it's uh, it's their own engine I don't know who makes it but uh, it, it's a rear slanted single cylinder that makes some room for that uh, eventual uh, electric power plant with batteries and stuff so under the gas tank that's where it's supposed to go I can't wait to get this thing in a hybrid though that's gonna be uh, pretty intense I I'm pretty curious about this. The good and the bad. Let's go. Let's go with uh, with the bad. Let's start with the bad and finish on the good on the good uh, the good things. So uh, the bad uh, engine power is not up to what's claimed. Uh, I don't know if it's an engine tuning thing or uh, for me in my brain I think it's a CVT issue. Uh, I need some better tuning. Uh, yeah, that's. That's that's the one. That's the main the main gripe I got with this thing. Uh, number two is uh, brake uh, rear brake. That's not a rear brake. That's a uh, what shall I call it? It's a parking brake, and you know, it's not adjusted. I'm very very surprised. And you know, fit and finish. This is missing screws. Uh, it's missing a cap. You know, it's all stuff that might have just have been neglected by uh, by people who tried it a little bit too hard. But. Uh, you know, those are those are two two major issues. The brake the brake uh, the brake calibration front to rear. If you push the brake pedal in the back, you can't touch the front brake. If you touch the front brake, you see the pedal going up. There's something wrong in the calibration there. Uh, you know, there, there's there's supposed to be a junction box or something like that in there. So uh, now that those those are my two main gripes. Uh, uh, I love the seating position. The seat comfort is awesome. Uh, tracking, uh, suspension, steering, uh, very good, above average uh, on that. Uh, the tires are decent. It's uh, a little bit, uh, it's average, but it's a radial. Thank you for that. Uh, transmission is easy to shift. There's all kinds of, you know, and it's it rides nice at speed. It rides nice slow. I like this. It's a it's a decent it's a decent thing. There's some fit and finish issues like this. This is this is ugly. You know, uh, there are some a little bit of issues. This pocket here is it totally surprised me. I thought it'd be absolutely worth nothing, but it, it does work. It cuts a lot on on the the turbulence here. There's some good storage space on it too. Uh, lockable front and rear. All in all, it's it's a decent ride. There's something wrong with the CVT on this thing. It's not broken. It's a uh, it's just, eh. but I like the look. The look is new. It's fresh. Uh, I think I think they're gonna. They should be able to do quite well. Uh, this is it's expensive. This thing's like uh, twelve thousand bucks. It's uh, it's a lot of money for a single seater five seventy. Even if it got some uh, some extra features, I'm not that. Uh, I think it's a little bit too expensive. But it's still got a winch up front and all this stuff, you know, uh, it's similar to CF Moto because it's got flashers, it's also got a horn. <laughs> For a first try, it's a decent machine. Should you buy one? Well, my only issue is with the dealer network. It's a brand new dealer network, so, you know, there's still, there's still some, some stuff to be proven in there. And the, the importer, the Canadian importer does not have experience at doing this either. So, uh, you know, it could work out fine. It could be a total disaster. My take on this, wait a little bit. See how it fares out, but uh, it, should be, uh, it should be all good. So this is Mark from the ATV guys. And please do, uh, do subscribe to our YouTube channel if you got a minute and you like a little bit of our content. And uh, you can also join us on Facebook. Uh, ATV Guys uh, Magazine at ATV, ATV Guys Magazine 
and uh, you can catch us on our group which is the Canadian ATV UTV Nation which is a large uh, Canada's uh, one of Canada's largest ATV groups uh, you know of all of all kinds it's a no drama place uh, it's it's fun there's a lot a lot of information being shared there so thank you for being with us and uh, I'm going back out there see you later